So welcome back to the Cozy Rosie Crochet channel and today I'm sharing with you how to crochet a back scrubber. Now this is part of the Cotton Grass Crochet Along. This is the second pattern in the Crochet Along to be released. This back scrubber features two handles so that you can use it around the body and it features some front post double crochet stitches to create a really good textured feel. Now before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and of course the notification bell so that you never miss out on one of my crochet tutorials or patterns again. Let's find out the materials we need to get started. I'm going to be using some paint box yarns cotton. I have two bits, two strands of DK weight cotton for my main colour in shade paper white which is 401. I'm going to be holding two strands together to get a similar ply to their Aran weight, which is the equivalent of a size four. You can choose to work both parts, both your main colour and your contrast colour in an Aran weight or a size four worsted. It's completely up to you. The reason I've double stranded on the white is simply because I don't have any Aran white left in my stash. So I'm improvising and I encourage you to do the same if you don't have the exact weight needed. We're also going to be using a 5mm crochet hook. All of these patterns in the cotton grass spa set all use a 5mm crochet hook and either two strands of double knit or one strand of Aran weight or size 4 worsted. So gather all of your materials and let's get started. So we're starting with our main colour which for me is the paper white. And as I've said, I'm double stranding, so I'm using two strands at the same time. And you just use that as if it's one. So I'm making a slip knot using both of the strands to create my slip knot. And then I'm going to place them onto my hook, ready to get started. So we're going to start by making a chain of 21. So we yarn over the hook and just bring it through the loop on the hook 21 times. So that was one two, three, four, twenty and twenty-one. If you've already made the cotton grass washcloth, you may already be familiar with the sedge stitch. But just in case, and you're just finding this pattern on its own, I'm going to walk you through how to crochet the sedge stitch. So we're going to start by working into our second chain from hook. That loop on our hook never counts as a stitch. There's our first chain and we're working into that second one. And we're going to be working three stitches into that second chain from hook, starting with a US single crochet, the same as a UK double crochet. So I'm just going to insert my hook underneath that top loop of that second chain. I'm going to yarn over and bring my loop back through, yarn over and pull through both loops for that US single crochet. And then we're working back into the same chain, but this time we're yarning over so that we can work a US half double crochet. So we yarn over, reinsert our hook into that same chain, yarn over to bring up a third loop. And this time we're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops. For our third stitch that makes up our sedge stitch, we're going to yarn over, reinsert our hook into the same chain again, yarn over to bring a loop up. And yarn over and we're just pulling through those first two loops, yarn over, pull through the last two to make that US double crochet. We're then going to skip the next two chains, ready to work into the third chain along, working another sedge stitch. So we insert the hook, yarn over to bring our loop up, yarn over to pull through two for that single crochet, we're yarning over and reinserting our hook into the same chain again to work our US half double crochet. Yarn over to bring your third loop up, yarn over and pull through all three loops. Finally, for our third stitch, we're working a US double crochet again into that same chain. So we yarn over, insert our hook, make sure I've gone through both, yep. Yarn over to bring a loop up, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. So we're going to repeat this all the way down our chain. We're skipping the next two chains and then working our sedge stitch into the next. So we skip one, skip two, insert our hook, yarn over, bring our loop up for our US single crochet, yarn over, reinsert into the same stitch to bring up our third loop and pull through all three for that half double crochet, 
and yarn over and insert for the final time. Yarn over to bring up a loop, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two for our double crochet. So we're going to repeat this all the way down and we should have one chain remaining and I'm going to meet you when you have just one chain left. Remember we're skipping two and then working a single crochet, a half double crochet and a US double crochet all into that same chain. So continue to repeat that all the way along and I'll meet you when you have just one chain remaining. So when you have just one chain remaining, all we're going to do is in that final chain is insert underneath those two loops and work a US single crochet. So if like me, your chain is looking a little bit curly, just give it a gentle tug along the bottom and it should straighten out nicely for you. So at the end of row one, you should have seven sedge stitches and one single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and there's our single crochet. Going into row two, we begin with a turning chain of one, and we're gonna work into that first stitch we have just chained one out of. We're gonna place our first sedge stitch into that single crochet. So we insert our hook, bring our loop up, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over, insert to bring our third loop up, yarn over, pull through three for that half double crochet. And our final stitch is gonna be our double crochet. So we yarn over, insert, bring our loop up, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. Now each of our sedge stitches along the rest of the row are gonna be worked into the single crochet that we worked in the previous row. So we're going to skip the next two stitches and work into that third one along. From the side, you've got one, two, and that's where we're gonna insert our hook. From the top, looks a little bit different when you're double stranding. So we've got one, two, and that's our third stitch, probably the smallest one if yours looks like mine, and that's where we're aiming for our hook. So we skip the double crochet and the half double crochet from the previous row, and we're working into the single crochet from the previous row. So I'm inserting my hook, bringing my loop up, yarning over to work that first single crochet, and then working a half double crochet, followed by a double crochet, all into that same stitch again. We're gonna repeat this all the way down, so we skip the next two stitches, ready to work into that single crochet, placing our next sedge stitch. So we skip one, two, and insert our hook into our single crochet from the previous row, and work our next sedge stitch. So we work a single crochet, yarn over for a half double crochet, and then yarn over again for our double crochet. So we're working the same stitch, just this time we're working it into our single crochet. So we skip the next two stitches, insert our hook, and work our next sedge stitch. So that's a single, a half double, and a double crochet. So continue to repeat that all the way down and I'll meet you once you've completed your sedge stitch here, ready for the end of row two. So once you've worked that last sedge stitch, we're gonna skip the double crochet, the half double crochet, and just around the side, you'll probably find your single crochet from the previous row. So we're gonna insert our hook into that single crochet ready to work one final single crochet into that last stitch. At the end of row two, you should still have seven sedge stitches and that little single crochet. Rows three to four are the same as row two that we've just worked. So we yarn over and chain one for our turning chain, and then we're ready to repeat row two twice more for rows three and four. So in that same stitch as our chain one, we're working our sedge stitch of a single crochet, a half double crochet, and a double crochet. For the remainder of the row, we skip the next two stitches, our double and our half double crochet, working our sedge stitch into the top 
of that single crochet. So we work a single crochet, a half double crochet, and that double crochet. Repeat that all the way down. And then in that last stitch, we just work our single crochet. I'll meet you at the end of row three, just to confirm that you're happy with it. And then I shall leave you to work row four and I'll see you in a moment. So I have my three remaining stitches. I'm going to skip the next two and into that last stitch, we're just working one single crochet. So we're going to repeat that again for row four and I'm going to meet you for row five because we're going to change colours. So continue to repeat row two once more to work your fourth row and I will meet you at the end of row four ready to work row five. So I've just completed my fourth row and I'm going to change to my contrasting colour for row five. To make my colour change as seamless as possible, I'm just going to pull back on my last stitch and rework it, changing to my contrast colour halfway through. So I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over to bring a loop up and then just place my main colour out of the way for a moment, pick up my contrast colour, make sure I've got a nice long tail. I'm just going to place that over my hook with the tail at the back and then complete that last stitch in my new colour. I'm going to pull on the, that tail of the white and tighten up my pink or my contrast colour. And then we're ready to work row five in colour B. So we start with our chain of one. Now normally I would weave over these ends. But I'm not going to do that because I'm going to, we're going to work an edging on our back scrubber. So we don't need to weave these in. We're going to weave them as we work our edging. So we just continue to work row five as we did row two, starting with our sedge stitch in that first stitch. So our single crochet, half double crochet, and our double crochet, all into that first stitch. We're skipping the next two, just as we were before, and continuing across, placing our sedge stitch into each stitch until we have just three remaining, where we're gonna work that single crochet in our last stitch. So I'll meet you once you've worked across, for that last stitch where we're going to be changing colour back to our main colour again. So I've worked my last sedge stitch and I'm just placing my final single crochet into that last stitch. I'm just going to pause there because we're going to change back to our main colour. But if you're like me, I haven't fastened off yet. Let me go grab my scissors. So I'm just going to fasten off my main colour, leaving a nice long tail for weaving. And then I can pick up my main colour again, ready to finish my final stitch of row five. So I'm just placing it over my hook, bringing that through and pulling down on the contrast colour just to secure that stitch in. Move my tails out of the way. And I'm going to do my chain one, my turning chain for the next row, ready to continue into rows six to ten. I'm going to turn my work. And I am going to disconnect my pink so we've got less yarn attached to our project. So for rows six to ten, we're going to be working four rows of sedge stitch. This is what we've done for all the rows so far. So we're doing four more rows of that sedge stitch into that first stitch, the same as our chain one, and working across as we did for row two. So we're doing four more rows, and I'm going to meet you at row 11, where we're changing stitches and beginning the textured portion of our back scrubber. So I will see you at the end of row 10. So I've just finished row 10 and I'm ready to get started on row 11 with you. Now row 11, we are setting up to create that textured front post fabric in the middle of our back scrubber. So instead of doing a chain one, our turning chain is going to be a turning chain of three. So we yarn over and pull through three times. That's two, and three. Now this chain three counts as a US double crochet, so we're not going to work into the stitch underneath that chain three. What we're going to do is work one US double crochet into each stitch across. So we're going to yarn over the hook and insert our hook into that first stitch, yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over, pull through two, 
yarn over, pull through two. And we're going to work into each stitch across. So we're going to yarn over and insert into the next to work another double crochet. We need to make sure we don't miss these little single crochets as well from the previous row. They can go, they can go missing quite easily because they're so small. So continue to work one US double crochet into each stitch across and I'll meet you at the end of row 11. So at the end of row 11, you should have a total of 22 double crochets, remembering that this chain one does count as a stitch. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 and 22. Phew, I didn't miss any. If you did, go back quickly and just find that missing one and make sure you've got a total of 22. For row 12, we're going to work our first row of texture. So we start with our turning chain of three again. So that's one, two and three. We're going to turn our work and remember that this chain three counts as our first stitch. We're going to be working a front post double crochet around the post of the next stitch. So here's where we normally insert our hook underneath that stitch, but instead we're going to be going around the post. Now we're doing a front post double crochet, so we're going to insert our hook from the front of our project, okay? We start by yarning over the hook, insert the hook through the side of the post, and we're kind of coming back out of the front as well. I'll show you again. So you've got your chain three and the stitch underneath. We're not worrying about that one. We're working around that second post. There's the stitch, here's the post, and we're working around. Because we're doing a front post, we've yarned over, insert, bring our hook back out of the front around this post. We're then gonna yarn over, and bring our hook back through, yarn over and complete our double crochet as normal. So we pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. We're then going to work a double crochet into the top of the next stitch. But what's really important is that you're not working into the top of the stitch that this post stitch is sat in front of. So the easiest way to look at it is to find your raised post and go into that stitch. So there's the post of the next stitch and the stitch is just above it. You can see the hole that we're inserting our hook into. So we yarn over, insert our hook, Yarn over to bring a loop up, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. Now the next stitch that we're working, so we're right above this post here, we're going to be working around the next post. So we yarn over, we've worked here, so we're going in, underneath and around that next post. So in through the front and out of the front for a front post double crochet. We yarn over, bring our hook back through, Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. We're going to repeat this all the way down. So you can see that we've worked around this post here. We've worked around this post here. There's our next post, but we're going into the stitch. So we yarn over, insert and work our double crochet as normal. Because we're repeating this, the next stitch is going to be a front post double crochet. So we've worked here. This is where we're going to insert our hook into this side. So we yarn over, insert, come back out the front, yarn over, bring our loop up, pull through two and pull through two. So we're going to continue to repeat this all the way down, working one front post double crochet followed by a double crochet until we have just two stitches remaining. And that's where I'm going to meet you got the post going into the stitch next to it. I've worked the stitch so I'm going around the post. Once you've worked your first couple of rows of these you can almost follow your previous rows work and it'll become a lot more obvious where you're working your front post and where you're working your back post. Ooh, front post and where you're working your stitch. Sorry normally I use it for ribbing and there's one front, one back post. So continue along and I'll meet you at the end of row 12.
So when you have just two stitches remaining, remembering that this chain three does count as a stitch, we're just going to work a double crochet into the next and then we're going to work a final double crochet into the top of our turning chain of three. So if like me your chain threes get a little bit small, just kind of wiggle your way through. Mine always get a bit tight. Making sure you've picked up two loops of that chain and work your double crochet as normal. So at the end of row 12, you should have 12 double crochets and 10 front post double crochets. So you can see the raised stitches there. Gosh, look at all that texture. It's lovely, isn't it? So we started with our chain three and then we've got one. So every other stitch is a front post. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Phew. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve double crochets. I'm going to go into row 13 and we'd start with a turning chain of three. So we yarn over, pull through three times and we're repeating row 12 again. Remember that this chain three counts as our first double crochet. In this first stitch here, we're going back around the post for our front post double crochet. So there's that stitch that we've just worked above with our chain three. And we're going to insert our hook around that first post closest to us, just as we did for row 12. Work a front post double crochet, followed by a double crochet into the next. So we might have to pull things around a little bit to make sure you're finding the right stitch. So you can see where you've worked your post and this is your next stitch. See how this post seems a little bit closer? That's where you're going to be working your next front post. So it's going to be tucked back a little bit and that's where we place the double crochet. So this one is a little bit further towards us. So we're going to be working around that post. So insert through the front and back out the front. And there's that one that's a little bit further away from us. And we're just working a double crochet into that one. This post seems a little bit closer and we've just worked there. So again, going in underneath and around that next post. That's a bit further away that one, isn't it? So let's do a double crochet there. We're alternating the double crochet with the front post double crochet, and it really does create a lovely texture. If you've worked post stitches before, you're probably well familiar with some of the risks of going wrong. Um, just with this one, at least it is the same for every single row that we're working. There's no change, which is why we've started on an even number. When they're worked in odd numbers, there is a two row repeat. When you work on an even number for your front posts and your ribbing, the rows tend to be the same. So continue across working one front post double crochet followed by one double crochet. And I'll meet you at the end of row 13. Just like we had in row 12, I've got two stitches remaining to end my row with two double crochets. So I'm working a double crochet into the top of my chain three. Oh, it's really disappeared, this one. And work that final double crochet. So at the end of row 13, we should still have 12 double crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and our chain three counts as number 12. And we should have 10 front post double crochets, so the ones that are closest to us. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So if I turn my work, you can see that there is a nice ridge where you have your front posts here and where we haven't worked a front post, it creates a bit of a bump, but you'll see that disappear as you continue to work up these rows. So for rows 14 through to 28, we are again repeating row 12, starting with that chain of three, which counts as our first stitch. And then if I have a look here, you can see again, this stitch is closest to us. So we're working around that front post and alternating the front post, 
with a double crochet. Repeating that all the way across, working one front post double crochet, followed by a standard double crochet worked into the top of the next stitch. Repeating that all the way along until we have just two stitches remaining, and then we're working two double crochets. We're going to repeat that for rows 14 all the way through to row 28, and I'll meet you back to continue the rest of the pattern, ready to then move on to our edging and our handles. I'll see you in a moment. Once you've finished rows 14 to 28, you should have quite a large piece of crochet fabric. You may find that your ribbing section is moving or shrinking in a little bit. Don't worry, that is completely normal. As long as your stitch count is still a total of 22, so that you have those 12 double crochets and you've still got your 10 front post double crochets, it'll all come out in the wash, as they say. Now we're going to go straight into row 29 and we're going back to our sedge stitch. So we're going to do our turning chain of one. And then just like before, we're going to be working into that same stitch as our chain one, working a single crochet, followed by yarning over and working our half double crochet and then yarning over to work our third stitch in the sedge stitch, which is of course a double crochet. Just like we were doing before, we're going to skip the next two stitches and this time we're working into the top of the double crochet still because that last row that we worked was the front post double crochets. And we're continuing working our sedge stitch, which is of course that single crochet, a half double crochet and a double crochet all into the same stitch. We're going to repeat this all the way across until we have just one stitch remaining. So we're skipping two and then working our sedge stitch into the next with our single crochet, our half double crochet, followed by our double crochet to create our sedge stitch. Skip two and continue all the way down. Continue to repeat that all the way along until you have just three stitches remaining where I'll meet you for our final stitch. So when you have just your three stitches remaining, your last stitch is going to be into the top of your chain three. We're simply going to skip the next two, working a single crochet into the top of that chain three from the previous row. So we're just going to work our single crochet. So for rows 30 to 33, we're going to repeat row 29 or row two, they're all the same. So we're going to be working rows 30, 31, 32 and 33. So four more rows of our sedge stitch. So we work our chain one and turn, ready to work our sedge stitch into that same stitch as our chain one. Repeat that all the way across. We're going to repeat that all the way across until we have just three stitches remaining, ready to work that final single crochet into that last stitch. Now that we've worked that previous row of sedge stitch, you can see that we're skipping that double, half double and working back into that single crochet again, just as we were for row two earlier on in our pattern. So continue to repeat that for those next four rows and I'll meet you ready for row 34. So once we've finished rows 30 to 33, we're going to be changing colours back to our contrasting colour. So I'm just going to pull back that last single crochet that I made so that I can change colour just before I finish this stitch. As always, I'm just going to place my yarn over the back of my hook with the tail at the back and bring it through. Tighten on my main colour, make sure I've got enough of a tail. And I'm just going to secure it with a, a chain one. Tighten that all down. I'm not weaving these ends in because I'm going to be placing an edging on as we work our handle. So for row 34, we are, of course, working a repeat of row two once again. So we're working our single crochet, our half double crochet, and our double crochet all into that same stitch as our chain one. And then we're skipping those next two and repeating it all the way across, working that sedge stitch into the top of the single crochet from the previous row. So continue to repeat that all the way across and I'll meet you back at the end of row 34, where we'll be changing back to our main colour again. 
I'll see you in a moment. So I've made my way across to the end of row 34 and I'm ready to change back to my main colour. And again, I'm just placing my ends over my hook with the tails at the back. I'm gonna bring them through, pull down on that pink just to tighten that stitch and then make my chain one to secure. Now I'm going to just, oh, if I can get organized. So I'm gonna fasten off my pink here because we're finished with that color now. And I'm just gonna make a little knot just to secure that there, just a little knot. I'm gonna weave them in later. I just don't want them that hole getting too big as I'm working. So I've already made my chain one. And we're going to be working rows 35 all the way up to 38. So 35, 36, 37 and 38 in our sedge stitch as we've been doing. So repeating row two again for a further four more rows. So we're just working that sedge stitch into that same stitch as our chain one. So our single crochet, our half double crochet and our double crochet. We then skip the next two stitches, working into that single crochet from the previous row to place our next sedge stitch. So work all your rows up to row 38. It's just four more rows in sedge stitch as we've been doing. And then we're gonna get moving on to make our handles and our edging. So I'll see you in a moment to get working on that part of the pattern. So once we have finished row 38, we have completed the body of our back scrubber. Doesn't that look nice and exfoliating? We're going to continue straight into making our edging and our handles because they're one and the same and it is worked just in two rounds working the whole way around the edge of our project. So the first round we start with a chain of one and we turn our work and we're going to start by working a single crochet into the same stitch as our chain one. We're then going to make a chain of 40. So one two, three, four, 39 and 40. I'm going to kind of rotate my project a little bit and I need to just make sure that my chain is not twisted at all. So we're gonna skip 19 stitches all the way across and that will take us so that we have two stitches remaining. So there's one, oops, one and two, and we are joining two the second from last stitch. So once you've inserted your hook into that second from last, we're going to yarn over and bring a loop up, yarn over and pull through two, and then single crochet into that last stitch as well. And that attaches our handles. We're going to rotate our work to continue working down the edge of our project. And we're going to work 54 single crochets evenly. So where we've worked our sedge stitch, we're gonna work one single crochet into each end of the row. And then where we have our double crochet in this section here, we're probably gonna work one into the end of the row and one around that arranged chain three or that last double crochet. So we're aiming for 54. So we've worked into this one here. We're we'll gonna work into the end of the rows here, working one single crochet evenly down. So we're aiming for a total of 54. And we're just going to repeat working one single crochet down the side of our project. If, like me, you have not woven your ends in yet, you can use this opportunity to make sure that those colour changes are secure. That one was not. <laughs> Where's that tail gone? So I'm just going to make another little knot just to make sure they don't come undone without distorting my project. There we go. And then I can work over these ends all at the same time. There we go. I'm just literally making sure that the ends of the yarn are over my hook as well and continuing to work down into the end of each row. Keep working down and I'll meet you when we reach our double crochet section and we can I'll show you what I mean by working two single crochets on the edge of each of those rounds rows sorry as well. So when we reach our double crochet se section, our stitches are taller than when we were working our sedge stitch. So we need to work roughly two stitches per row end. I've got one more to do for my sedge stitch section. 
and then we are ready to work our treble crochets to work our double crochets so you can see here that we have the end of a row and then a space followed by another end of a row so the, what we're going to be aiming for is to work into the end of the row and then work one single crochet around the post or the chain three that we made in that double crochet section and then we work into that next end of the row and around again so continue to work 54 single crochets all the way down the edge of your project and I'll meet you here ready to work our next handle. So once we have worked down our first side and we've reached all the way down to our original chain, we're going to work one single crochet into our first chain and then we're ready to make our chain of 40 for our next handle. So we just chain 40, one, two, three, four, 39 and 40. Just gonna rotate my work and then skipping all the way along to the last two chains of our original starting chain. So we have one there and one there. So I'm just gonna insert my hook into that second hole to place one single crochet and then place a second single crochet I'm going to go through the chain here to keep things neat and then once again we are ready to work evenly back down the other side of our project working at 54 or however many single crochets you had on the other side so i'm going to work another 54 single crochets evenly down here and i'm going to meet you back to where we started our handle ready to work round two So once you've made it all the way back to your handle, we're not joining, we are carrying straight on. And what we're going to do for round two is simply work one single crochet into each stitch around and fasten off. So it's entirely up to you which way you work your handle chains. And if you know me, I'm going to encourage you to work into the back bump of your chain for a very simple reason. It creates the look of a chainless foundation without having to do one. Um, but also it means that the, the nice side of your chain is visible and doesn't create any additional holes. So if you see, if I turn this here, you can see there's a bit of a bump at the back of our chain as opposed to our normal plait-like look. And we're just gonna insert our hook underneath that back bump and work our single crochet as normal. And once you've done that first one, the back bumps make themselves a lot more apparent so it does become a little bit easier. Now it's a bit of a tricky one where I'm working two strands of yarn. Do need to make sure that I pick up both strands. Where's it gone? There it is. And I'm just gonna work into each of these bump back bumps across of my chain so that I get an even looking handle on both sides. If you can see what I mean here is you can see the other side of your chain being left behind so that both sides of the chain look the same. So it's equivalent of doing a foundation, a chainless foundation, sorry. However, because we need to work the whole way around the row or around all the edges again of our pattern, this is the easier way of doing it without having to cut and rejoin our yarn. So continue to work all the way around and then I'm going to join you in a moment to show off my edging. So you really can see the difference once you've completed all of your edging. You can really see the difference in how much thicker our handle would be by working into those back bumps of our handles. It makes it a little bit thicker, a little bit stiffer, but there is gonna be a little bit of stretch, especially when it's wet because it is cotton. So I really hope you've enjoyed making your very own back scrubber. And of course, there are two more patterns in the cotton grass collection that are going to be releasing if they're not available already. They're releasing over the next couple of weeks. So the next pattern to come out is going to be our cotton grass face scrubbies. And then the next pattern will be the corresponding mesh bag that you can use as a soap saver or you can use it to wash those face scrubbies as well. So as always, thank you so much for joining me and I will see you in the next video.